Good morning, everybody. My grandma recently moved off the farm, and my mom traveled to Holland to help her pack her things. While she was packing, she found an old bar of soap. Being a collector of all things vintage, my mom asked my grandma if she could have this bar of soap. She kind of hummed and hawed, and then hesitantly came to the conclusion that, no, she better hold on to it. My grandma's had this bar of soap since World War II. In a pinch, you could wash your hair, your clothes, and your dishes with it. Fast forward to a few weeks ago when I was at a local grocery store and I saw staff pulling soap off of the shelves. Surely it must be unsafe or recalled, right? Wrong. It was simply just expired. I was shocked. How did we decide that soap could expire and when it expired? My grandma was still very optimistic that she might use this 80-year-old bar of soap. They were throwing out soap that's three years old on the grocery store shelves. While it's not food, it's very symbolic of what happens to a lot of our grocery store items every day. Meat, dairy, produce, and even non-perishables are tossed by the billions. Food waste is a 1.3 billion ton a year problem. To put that in perspective, agriculture production produces about 6 billion tons of food. That's like looking at a 1,000 acre field and 216 of those acres never making it to the consumer's stomach. At the same time, every 10 seconds, someone is dying of hunger. We also have the most popular question that we ask farmers, which is how do we plan on feeding 9 billion, 10 billion people. But the harsh reality is that we could be feeding many more people, but we lose so much food from farm to plate. And like many social issues, there's no one size fits all solution. So I'd like to take you on the journey from field to stomach to analyze that. First on the farm. When I was researching food waste, I met with a farmer. We talked about a lot of things, but we mostly talked about where he loses a lot of his production. We talked about improper storage that leads to moldy grain and heated canola. And we talked about equipment failures, human error, and even transportation issues. But when it came to accountability, he kind of just kind of put his hands up and said, I get paid by the bushel. I have every intent, I have every intent to deliver as much grain at the highest quality as possible, which is a fair point, right? Probably the problem with that mentality is that nobody wastes food on purpose. Factories have a bottom line, grocers have a profit margin to obtain, and consumers have a grocery budget. And the fact of the matter is that 33% of food waste happens on the farm. It is all of our responsibilities to manage this food waste. And unfortunately, when a lot of farmers hear social change, they think expenses. But it's precisely the opposite. By revising safety and training, maintaining storage vessels and equipment, which as I know is really exciting stuff for your weekend off, we'll likely see less spoiled grain, spilled grain, and damaged grain, as well as less injury and lost time which all turns into more profit. Small adjustments on large operations account for massive change. Our food from the farm, whether grain, produce, milk, or meat, then goes to some sort of processing plant. Companies have made large leaps in the last five years in reducing their food waste, but there's still some extraordinary exceptions. Almonds, for example. There are two plants in California that will buy almonds. One turns it into almond milk, and the other into almond flour. Both dispose of their byproduct by either feeding it at a feedlot or by sending it to a composting facility, which is a great option, except for the fact that the byproduct from almond flour is almond milk and the byproduct from almond milk is almond flour, making each almond that is sent to one of these facilities half as efficient as possible. This goes to show that streamlining does not necessarily mean efficient resource allocation, and with companies as large as Cargill, Nestle, and General Mills, making more and more products in diverse grocery categories, it is extremely important to micromanage these resources to ensure that by the time it reaches the feedlot or the composting facility, we've used every part of that apple or peach as we can. Grocery stores often see, receive a lot of the flack when it comes to food waste because we've all seen a Twitter or Facebook or YouTube video about dumpster divers who are able to go behind these stores and find perfectly edible produce in the dumpster. But grocery stores are really just a reflection of flawed consumer habit. They pile food high because if we saw one lonely apple, we'd assume that there'd be something wrong with it and not take it home. Grocery stores stock more than they sell on purpose, and it leads to 122 kilograms of waste per person per year. That's the same as 1,700 apples per person per year. But again, it's a reflection of our consumer habit. Because when the food finally makes it to the consumer, the average Canadian household throws, a, throws out about $1,500 worth 
of groceries every year. That makes our Tim Hortons habit seem pretty affordable. 75% of this waste is salad, fruit, and vegetables, which makes absolute sense because these are the most perishable things we can buy. This in part is because of those big large piles we see at the grocery store for most impulse shopping. So going into the grocery store to reduce your food waste, you first want to have a plan and a grocery list and stick to it. The second step that we can do to prevent food waste at a consumer level is growing what we can ourselves. One head of lettuce grown from a seed that costs one less than one cent and harvested as needed can fulfill someone's lettuce needs rather than buying a head of lettuce every week and throwing it, the rest out when it gets brown. Lettuce, potatoes, tomatoes, and carrots, and a lot of other grocery store staples can be, bo can be grown at home, even on apartment patios, roofs, community gardens, and windowsills. Because at the end of the day, food, pressure, food waste puts pressure on the agriculture system. It leaves the poor hungry. It costs Canadians billions of dollars a year. And it's the responsibility of everyone on each level of production and consumerism, particularly the end consumer. The customer is always right, and if we support brands and stores that limit food waste, the system will change to support us. We've seen it with the organic and the gluten-free and the human certifi uh, certified, humane certified, um, and while we might not all agree with these movements, I think reducing food waste is something that we can all get behind. So as consumers, I challenge you to question your habits, your needs, and especially the expiry date on soap.